You're listening to A Slice of Therapy with me, Alan Parry. So I want to tell you the story of a man named Jerry. And one day Jerry decided that he was going to change his life. And he came up with this idea of all the things he would do. And he would do them every day because why couldn't he? Why couldn't he be someone who does all of these things every day? And so he came up with this list of things that he was going to do every day. And it was going to improve all aspects of his life. It was going to improve his career. And then he had things that he was going to do that were going to improve his body. And then he had things that he was going to do that was going to improve his relationships. Then he had things that he was going to do that would improve his finances. And he was going to do them every day. And there was this big list, but he felt powered up. And he got them done. And he thought, see, it looked a long list. But I can do it. I can do the list. And what's more, I can do it every single day. And then on the second day, Jerry sat there on the sofa and he couldn't be bothered. And he didn't do any of his lists that day. In fact, the list looked really overwhelming. And in fact, Jerry's not too untypical. Because human motivation goes up and it goes down. Some days it's sky high and some days... Our motivation is through the floor. And this is not a failure of us. This is just how human motivation works. And so on that first day, when Jerry decided he was going to do all sorts, and he was going to stretch himself to the limit, and he was certain that he could do this and make a change and do it every day, he really meant it. And not only that, he was even capable of doing it. On that day, because he'd happened to pick upon a day where his motivation was the highest it could be. But motivation, like I say, goes up and down. And so it's no surprise, really, that he couldn't maintain that because he's not going to be at the peak of motivation every day. Some days he will be. But it's only called the peak of motivation because it happens at the very, very top of the cycle. And then the motivation wanes again. And sometimes we'll be at the very foot of the cycle. Our motivation will be as low as it's possible to be. And this is where we would normally beat ourselves up. We would normally tell ourselves off and say, why am I? Such a failure. Why am I someone who has these great plans and then doesn't meet them? And yet the answer isn't because we're a failure at all. The answer is because it is normal for human motivation to go up and to go down again. And so whenever it goes down again, as it will, because that's how we're made, we end up having set ourselves up to fail By having the great plan in the first place. And so by having a massive plan that needed such enormous amounts of motivation every single day, then it means that we don't actually achieve that. So it's very easy to fall into a place where we believe that we're a failure. Where we believe that we're just not capable of doing things consistently and we'll sit there and think if only I could want to do these things now in my heart I feel as though I want to do them when I imagine what I'd like to be doing I I think of these things but I I can never motivate myself to get to get doing these things Now, if you get into that place, the key thing to understand is that typically the thing that motivates us 
is when we actually do something in the first place. But doing something in the first place kind of starts our engine. And once we've started our engine and it's revved up, we'll find that we're actually in a place where we are motivated. From a point where we're stood still, it's hard to get going. But once we get going, we're fine. I don't know if you ever remember trying to learn to ride a bicycle. The hardest bit of, of learning to ride a bicycle is that bit where you go from being still to moving. Being still to moving was always the place that I would fall off when I was learning to ride a bike. It was only when I got going that it was easy to stay on the bike. And it's a similar process here. The hardest thing is the starting. Once we've started, the key is in the engine and we're off. So how do you get the key in the engine in the first place? If the hardest thing is the starting, then it figures then that the thing that we should really be focused on is how to actually get ourselves to start. Well, the key lies in that idea where our motivation naturally goes high and low. Because if you don't want to set yourself up to fail, what you need to set yourself up to do is something that is within the very lowest of our motivation. So even when our motivation is right down at the bottom, the thing that we've set ourselves to do is within that very lowest level of motivation. And in fact, if we give ourselves something too much to do, it actually acts as a deterrent. It makes it hard to get the key into the ignition. And the reason why it makes it hard is because it just adds too much friction. If you were to say to yourself, I'll go and do a nine hour walk. Well, that's a lot to think of even to do a nine hour walk. But if you said a nine second walk, then you'd get started. And the funny thing is that getting started is the thing that turns the key in the ignition and then the engine's running. And so everything becomes easier after that. The mistake we make then is that when we try and do things and make our life better, we put the finish line in an unachievable place. The finish line, the thing that we define as success, shouldn't be all the way over there. It should be right within our grasp. It should be something that we can accomplish even when our motivation is at its lowest. Because what happens is that when we actually do that, when we actually get up off the sofa and do the thing, that small thing, the key goes in the ignition and it turns and the engine comes on. And from that point on, even if it is just nine seconds down the line, you're in a different place. You're in the place of someone whose engine is now running. It's hard to get motivated. But the most motivating thing that you can do is to get started. And so if you can make getting started really easy, that its deterrent effect is at its lowest because you think, oh, I'll just do the one wait or I'll just do a three second walk or I'll just write two words in the book I'm wanting to write. They all seem so doable that it actually gets you doing them. And so just to recap then, we saw that human motivation does naturally go up and down and that if we actually set ourselves Mount Everest every day, we might be able to do that on our highest motivation days, but we definitely won't do it on the others and certainly not when our motivation is at its lowest. So the key then in terms of respecting that is making sure that what we aim to do every day is smaller than our lowest motivation so that we can always tick that box. And of course, if we want to do more, we can. But our goal is a tiny one. And we saw as well that the hardest thing about doing anything is starting. Just like a bicycle, the point where you'll fall off 
is at the very, very beginning when you're at a standstill. But when you get moving, you're fine. And you're not going to fall off the bicycle once you're moving and you're going at a decent pace. What's important then is to start. And the thing that will put you off starting is if the task that you're facing is too big. So just like with the human motivation where it goes high and low, the important thing is to give yourself a little task to do. If you make the finish line too far down the line, then you probably won't do it. Because a a nine-mile walk is really demotivating, feels hard to do, is not easy then to get going. A nine-second walk, on the other hand, We feel as though we can do that, so we get up and we do it. And the key thing is that once you're actually doing something, then you're motivated. It's easy to stay demotivated until you do something. So the most important thing to focus on is how to get started. And the way to get started is to start tiny. Because once you start tiny, it feels doable. And once it feels doable, you do it. And then the very act of having done it has revved up your engine and everything after that is easy. So if you like this idea, then please spread it around. You can also work with me as well, one-to-one. I'm Alan Parry and you'll find me at liverpoolpsychotherapy.co.uk. And of course, subscribe to the podcast for free because it means that you'll never miss an episode again. So thanks for listening. I'll be back again tomorrow with another one.